And praise God like your life depends on it. Amen. Come on, tell the Lord you love him on this morning. Lord God, we thank you this morning. God, we bless your name for you are God and beside you there is none other. I mean, thank the Lord on this morning for just being alive today. I mean, thank the Lord today for being saved today. Amen. Anybody saved in the house today? Praise God. Just love the Lord. Praise God. No, you don't have to have all the bells and whistles, but you got Jesus. Amen. Man, we prayed this song earlier, man. Give me you. Everything else can wait, man. Just give me you. Praise God. I, I just want the Lord on this morning. Anybody just want the Lord on this morning? Want his word? Amen. Praise God. You don't need all the bells and whistles again. I say we don't need all the creature comforts, but man, you got God. You got peace. That surpasses all understanding. You got joy, unspeakable joy. You have salvation and you have eternal life with the Lord Jesus Christ, King of King and Lord of Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we know crying up there, there won't be any rape. No, there won't be any hurt up there. Praise God. They're going to wipe away every tear. Well, I, I'm talking about somewhere y'all going. If I say y'all going to Bahamas next week, y'all be shouting. Praise God. I'm talking about heaven up in here. Praise God. Amen. I tell y'all going to. Amen. Somewhere in the Bahamas, they all be jumping up and down. Thank you. Ready to go get your swimsuit. But praise God. We're going to walk around heaven all day. And we're going to give God glory and give him praise. Come matter of fact, let's practice. Can we practice in here right now? Lord, I thank you. Holy, holy is the lamb. Holy, holy is the lamb. Hallelujah. Holy, holy is the lamb who was slain before the foundation of this earth. Man, I see y'all must be tired. Y'all must be exercising this morning or something, y'all. I don't see nobody in the mood for praising the Lord. Well, I'm going to praise them all by myself. God, you are good, and you are great, and you are greatly to be praised. God, I could not have done this by myself. I couldn't be saved. I couldn't be a new creation in Christ Jesus. I couldn't have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. None of this could ever take place without your saving grace. God, I thank you for your blood that washes away all my sin. I thank you that you cast my sin into the sea of forgiveness, and for your own namesake, You'll never bring it up again. God, I thank you, Lord God, that we are being sanctified. We're being transformed by the renewing of my mind, Lord God, that I may prove what is good and the perfect and the acceptable will of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Anybody else happy about things like that? About that. Amen. Praise God. You can leave this place today. Amen. And you're going to open your eyes before a king who has done everything, everything, everything. He took all the stops out. He killed his only begotten son so that we may be in fellowship with him again. God is awesome, everybody. God is awesome. I'm going to say it again. God is awesome. He, he's great, and he's greatly to be praised. Come on, somebody. Amen. It shouldn't be hard to get us to pray. We go to a basketball game. We, we'll, we'll, we'll cheer for our favorite team, won't we? Amen. Just because of the player that we love. But Jesus Christ, that's, that's, our, that's our guy, y'all. Jesus Christ, that's our guy. He's he the main man. And we have to remember to keep the main thing, the main thing. That is the main thing. Amen. That we keep the main thing, the main thing. Amen. God is, is everything. Amen. Praise God. Why are you standing in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10? I've just been listening to uh, not only our members here, and listening at my own heart as what we're dealing with. You know, Kobe kind of threw, threw folks for a loop, kind of like some people. Seem like things in disarray. Guess what? Things are just where God wants them. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> things are just where God wants them. Yeah. Right now, you, you, you're right where they need to be. And he's working all things out according to the counsel of his own will. Amen. But we have some things that, that, that's going on. There's a war going on. And uh, it's raging. Amen. And sometimes we, we downplay it. Amen. Revelations on chapter 12. Verse 10, uh, welcome all our members and uh, uh, visitors. Did we welcome our visitors today? Yes. We did. Praise God. God bless you, Brother CJ. What's your fiance name? Ebony. Ebony and CJ. Praise God bless you. Any other visitors for the first time today? Amen. I would personally recognize. As a matter of fact, let's pray for CJ and Ebony. Father, we just pray <laughs> for this soon to be a couple, Lord God, married in holy matrimony. God, I just pray in the mighty name of Yeshua, King of King and Lord of Lord that you so anoint him to be the man to serve God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, to sacrifice, Lord God, and to sustain the love to take Ebony from where she is to where she needs to be in the Lord. And I pray that Ebony, Lord God, respects and honors and reverence 
him, Lord God, and as 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 unto the Lord God, after they they make those holy vows, God, God, I just praise you for for them wanting to live, God, for you, God, and in, in, in matrimony as God intended, God, in Jesus' name, bless their children, Lord God, just bless the fruit of their hands and the fruit of their lips, Lord God, in the mighty name of Yeshua, King of King and Lord of Lords, I pray and thank you, Amen, Amen. Amen. Praise God, Amen. Revelation chapter twelve, verse ten, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. Now has come salvation and the strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And we're going to look at Zechariah, Old Testament, chapter three. Verse one. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand pluck out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. And I said, Let them set a fair mirth upon his head. So they set a fair mirth upon his head and clothed him with garments and the angel of the Lord stood by and the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua saying, thus said the Lord of hosts, if thou will walk in my ways and if thou will keep my charge, then thou shall also judge my house and shall also keep my courts. And I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Talk about winning, winning the, the real war. Somebody say winning the real war. God, I just thank you today, Yahweh, for being a great eternal father. I thank you, Father God, that you are, are great and your word is great. I thank that you have already given us the victory. The victory of the war that's going on, not on the outside, but on the inside. God, you are tired of seeing your children defeated, tired of us being deceived. We're tired of us being destroyed, tired of us being accused. God, Satan is on his job, but God, you're on yours as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're able to do, Lord God, exceedingly abundant all we can ask or even think of according to that power that works in us. God, speak to us, Holy Spirit, as to how to win the real war. It's in the magnificent name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, we pray and thank you. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. I won't be before you long today. Uh, not a long day today, but there's a word from the Lord. Amen. There, there, there's a war that is going on on the inside of us. There's a war that is raging and the enemy is trying to day and night to get you to live a defeated life. But the word of the Lord stands true. God is a great God and he will not be defeated. He has already won every battle that is raging. Amen. But this war is the biggest rivalry in history. It's the biggest rivalry that's going on in you. Let me tell you what's going on inside of you. If you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and Yeshua HaMashiach, there, there's a rivalry going on in the inside of you. And it's the biggest rivalry in history. But it's unlike the great physical rivalries. You know, we got Purdue and Indiana. You know, that's a big time rivalry. We got uh, Alabama and Georgia. Amen. That's a a big rivalry, people from Michigan City, Elston, 
in Raj or uh, Elston in that other school. Amen. That 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 other school. A amen. You know, there, there there's some rivalries. Praise God. Young people, y'all don't remember that. Y'all just had one school and then you got Mark here, but we had that big rivalry of Elson and that other blue and gold team over there. Amen. I remember when I played in college football, Chabot and Laney was a huge rivalry. Sonoma State and UC Davis was a was a huge rivalry. Um, but it's it's unlike those rivalries. It's, it's unlike those rivalries because it's not played on the court or it's not played on a field. Um, this rivalry is between God and Satan. It's not played on, on a court. You can't win by scoring more points. Praise God. It's not, not won on the field. You can't win touchdowns. Praise God. This, this war is raging and it's played inside your temple. Yeah, this war is raging inside your temple. First Corinthians chapter six, verse 19 says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with the price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. God's word tells us that we need to be glorifying God. Satan hates when we glorify God because there's a rivalry going on. The Bible says we need to glorify God in our spirit and in our body, which both belong to God, you're not your own, the Bible said. We've been bought with a price. I may know you didn't wake yourself up this morning. I may know that it was the love of God that woke you up this morning. Pray God, it's the love of God, amen, that causes man to even come to church and even to repent. It's all about, all about God, everybody. But it's a war going on and it's raging on the inside of you and Satan comes in many different forms. He comes and disguises himself in many, many different forms, amen. But I believe winning this real war begins with identifying your, your opponent. Amen. And that Elston Rogers rivalry, man, I knew who our opponents were because we used to play at the water tower against them all the time. And some reason we could beat them on, on the court at the water tower, but we couldn't beat them when we got out there to that Raiders gym. I mean, I played all four years. I never beat Rogers in basketball, but in football it was another thing. I was able to control my own destiny on that field because I was real mad and mean, amen? But guess what? Even though we got this rivalry going on on the inside of us and we belong to the Lord, it is not my strength and it's not my power and it's not my might that I can defeat Satan and win the real war. But it's only by the spirit of the true and living God. We got to identify our opponent, y'all. We're going through life and we're blaming everybody for everything. Come on, somebody. We, we, we blame mama for not being there, daddy not being there. We blame a lot of people for us not excelling in the things of God. And seemingly we are being defeated on every hand. And in, in our personal relationships, sometimes financial, in our career, sometimes we're being deflated seemingly. But see, I, I'm mad at the enemy because God has called me to be a spokesperson of his word. And I'm supposed to be a, a communicator of God's transforming grace. And I'm supposed to give, give incentive to the people of God to know that you should win and not lose. You should live and not die. You're healed and not sick. You're prosperous and not impoverished. And so I'm, 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 I'm upset. When I see my brothers and sisters seemingly losing the war and I see it manifest on the outside, but I understand that what's taking place is on the inside. So in order for us to defeat what's going on, we got to take a look on the inside and we got to realize who's the real enemy. Who's the real enemy? We call one person the enemy, one group of people the enemy, but a lot of time the enemy is enemy. Enemy is enemy, it's my choices. The Bible says, I set before you, I call heaven and earth in front of you. I set life and death before you, blessings and curses. Choose the day. Choose the day. Who you gonna serve? It's, life is a choice, everybody. And if we're gonna win this war, we have to identify the fact that our opponent is not flesh and blood. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 say, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He says, put on the whole armor of God. He said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. A lot of times we're trying to fight like this. We want to we want to throw hands. We want to win the argument and lose the battle. God wants us to respond. We want to react. God says, no, we're going to walk out of here victorious today because we're going to understand that we have 
someone that sits in place for us, the priest, and he advocates for us. And Satan is beating us down with accusations. Satan is tearing our heads off with things that we've done in the past. We're living in guilt and condemnation, everybody. If you're living in guilt and condemnation and failure right now, this message is for you. Because we're not fighting against flesh and blood. Come on, hallelujah, Lord. He said we need to put on the armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen. We're fighting against the wrong enemy. We're fighting against people. And we need to be fighting against what's driving the people. We, we, we're fighting against a person. We need to be fighting against what's driving the person. We need to be able to discern, and that's the ability to thoroughly separate whose team is this person on. If they're living like they live on the other team, then you are in conflict with the devil. And if we identify our opponent, then we're not able to respond properly. Fighting against the wrong person. God says you need, you need to give, and it'll be given unto you good measure. I'm talking about tithes and often in church. We don't, we don't play that around here. But if, if we're wondering why things aren't coming to me, it's probably because I'm not giving. If hate coming my way, it's probably because I'm giving hate. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you will also reap. Spirit of the Lord, y'all, is teaching us that is a war raging on the inside of a young folk. Y'all can get this too. You can win the war over the culture that you're living in right now. Sister Erica, Sister Taya. Amen. Andre. Amen. And all the other young kids whose name I forgot. You, 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 you can win the real war on the inside. Because he says, we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against rulers. And this stuff been here way before we got here. We fight against systems. We fight against cycles. We fight against we got generational curses and hexes and vexes. We're fighting. We need the spirit of the true and living God. Against the rulers of darkness, against the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take upon yourself the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the day evil day and having done all. Another point. Have you done all? We're still looking for the, the victory, but God is asking, have you done all? You, you know they did you wrong. Have you forgiven completely in your heart? Have you done all? You know, God said, if you have two cloaks and they ask you for one, get given both of them. Have you done all? Love God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Has you done all? He said, after we've done all we can to stand. There's a little bit more that you can do. We're talking about winning the real war today. We're talking about winning the war that's raging on the inside of it. Anybody tired of losing? Tired of falling in the same place, getting knocked out in the same round? Amen. Anybody tired of, of going over the same bumps and curves and, and tripping over the same roads in the road, the same bumps in the road? Knowing they there. You're knowing they there. You, you, you're knowing what thus says the Lord. We're not realizing. We're trying to live according to people's standard and what people think about us. We're comparing ourselves with ourselves. Can I be real today? Worrying about what other people think about you will keep you out of the will of God, not in the will of God. Because you're trying to appease people and not trying to appease God. And God ways is not man ways and because they, they are so far distant between each other. We're thinking about NIL all the time, name, image, and likeness. Deion Sanders said, wow. That's crazy that when I played football, our goal wasn't NIL, name, image, and likeness. It was NFL. Their goal was a little bit higher than making an image for their own self. Their image was, I got to make this squad so I can go take care of my parents and take care of my family. Listen, brothers and sisters, the culture that we live in is raising a bunch of me monsters. Was raising a bunch of people who want all the attention when everything looked towards them. Am I saying don't be successful? No, I am not. Devil is a lie. I'm telling you, be successful, but use every gift that God has given you to glorify Him. Because there ain't no man in this world that's gonna leave mother, father, sister, brother, do the work of the Lord that won't be blessed in this time and in the time to come. Speak, Holy Ghost. Speak, Holy Ghost. You gotta understand who your opponent is. Somebody said, My opponent is Satan. My potent is Satan. That's number one. Secondly, 
we must identify the streaks and the witnesses, the strength and the wit and the weaknesses of our opponent. When I played college football, we, we did this in the film room. So as Christians, can we go in the film room? Amen. And look at our opponent. Amen. Because I looked at three cases that our opponent, he does. He, he's a deceiver. He's a destroyer. And he's an accuser. Y'all better stay with me now. I'm telling you now, this is going to help you. We're talking about winning the real world. Because Satan, if he can't get you in your mind and deceive you, he'll try to attack your body and destroy you. If he can't get you in your mind and deceive you, he'll attack your body and destroy you. If he can't deceive you or destroy you, he'll start accusing you. Thank you, Lord. I'm in the film room right now. I don't know if y'all, we, we, we looking up here. It's the film room. And the only way you can watch film on the devil is get the word of God and break down film. Break, break, break the film down. See, see how, see how he moves and see how he maneuvers. See if he running traps. See if he running isles. Oh, y'all know nothing about football. I messed up now and got y'all out of there. Amen. There's only a few people play football that know and not running the option or the wing option or not really. No, we got to find out what, 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 what his strength and his weaknesses are. Amen. Because let's watch this. Somebody say Eve. Satan, we'll see how he watched that. This is what he does. First of all, he finds a target, found a target, but he targets something. Satan, when he's trying to deceive you, he targets your mind. But, but, but he, not, he don't do this by hitting you, Mike, on the field or tackling you. He uses, what, what's his weapon? Lies. Come on, y'all. Is, is this, we in the park, are we watching film, y'all? Satan, when he got Eve, if you watch him break down the film, praise God, we watch him film, we in the film room. He saw Eve, amen, he heard what he told Adam, but he had Eve, because the Bible said that Eve was deceived. Adam transgressed the will of God, he sinned with his eyes wide open. Eve was deceived, he tricked Eve, he lied to Eve. So Satan, he targets your mind when he's trying to deceive you. What he used, he used lies. What's the purpose of all this? He wants you to be ignorant of God's will. Breaking down film, y'all. He, he wants you to be ignorant of God's will. Did God really say? Man, when the last time you questioned that in your mind and you heard it in the word, you heard what the Bible said, and you questioned in your mind, did God really say that? It don't line up with my, it don't line up with, 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 my, with my, my philosophical concepts. It don't line up with the way I've, I've been taught in the universities of higher education. It don't line up with culture and my philosophy. It don't line up. It's the will of God though. It's what God said. It's what God said. Don't eat of, of that tree. Now God knows that the day you eat of that tree, you're going to be like him. She said, fool, I'm already like him. And we should have said, say, I'm already like him. I, I was created in his image. Didn't you see when God put him to sleep and cut him open and took his rib out and brought him out and made woman and called her woman? Wasn't you there? Didn't you see? Do we know who we are? Because we're talking about winning the real war. We're sitting out as teammates of the king of king and the lord of lords. We're sitting on the kingdom team and we're watching film and we're seeing that Satan, he likes to deceive us in our mind. He targets your mind. His weapon is lies. What does he want to do? His purpose is to get you off and ignorant of the will of God. Go say, what are we going to do, team? What's, what's our defense? What's, what's our defense? When Satan has, has told us a lie about something we know that God said was the truth. It's the inspired word of God. It's the inspired word of God. That's your defense. That's how we're going to beat this play called deception. That's only run a couple plays, y'all. He run another one called Destroyer. Yeah, he want to destroy you. If he cannot deceive you, people sitting there right here under my voice, you got deceived. You know what was right. The Bible said, our soul knoweth right well. But Satan told you something, mixed a little word with it to make it sound like God, but not being good and sound. We bit on to it like we bit on to not an apple because the Bible doesn't declare that it was an apple. He said it was the forbidden fruit. Line on line, precept on precept. Little stuff like that get us way off target when we make something and put it in there that ain't even in there. 
Now you ate an apple. Now you look at apple. When you look at the sign, you see an apple telephone. You see the bite out of it. And then you get to thinking about, wow, Adam and Eve. A lot of stuff going on in the spirit realm, y'all. A lot of stuff going on. We got to win the real war. Because Satan, if he can't deceive you, he'll try to destroy you. Who did he do that to? He did that to Job. He did that to Job. Praise God. Let's, let's, let's take a look at, at Job chapter, chapter 1. Amen. Job chapter 1. Yeah, he tried to destroy Job's body. Anybody familiar? Praise God. We're going we gonna to keep it in the word here. Amen. Uh, we're still in the film room. Don't close your eyes. I remember Coach said, Gas is stand up. I used to be in the film room nodding now. And he said, Gas, stand up. We're standing up and watching the film. The film room, everybody else sitting down. Casual got the ice on their knees. I'm standing up because I'm falling asleep. And I'm doing other stuff at the at this practice and after school. I thank God for straightening my rebellious tail out. Rebellious ain't getting you nowhere. Rebellious is the spirit, is the spirit of witchcraft. Yeah. Amen. Witchcraft is deliberately disobeying God. I did it for a long time in my life. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving me another opportunity. Amen. Amen. Verse, verse 6. Now there was a day when the Son of God came to present himself before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. Talking about Satan getting interest. He can go up and down. Yeah, we're watching film now. And the Lord said to Satan, whence come of thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Satan, he, he, he getting a snapshot. He's he, he checking out everything, but he running up to, to, to heaven, tell him. Now, when Satan talked to us, he lied. But when he talked to God, he tell the truth. Oh, boy, that was, that was rich right there. It ain't that sound Satan is the father of lies, but, but when he talked to God about what he saw us do the other day, he, he, tell, he sometimes tell the truth. But he said he walking up and down, y'all. Uh, up, up and down. The Bible says Satan goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, watch. And Satan answers the Lord, I'm going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said to Satan, has thou considered my servant Job? that there is none like him in the earth, perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and is true of evil. And Satan answered the Lord and said, do it, Job, feareth God or not? Do, 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 do he fear you for not? Has thou made an hedge about him and about an house and, and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is up in his increase in the land. Man, put forth thine hand now and touch all that he has. And, and, and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said unto Satan, guess what, Satan? You know what? This is your, this is your good day. Behold, all that he has in thy power, only upon himself, put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Let's look at chapter two. Man, a lot of stuff went on with Job, y'all. You know? Try to destroy him. Try to destroy him, you know. You start, they, Satan wants to destroy your life, your children's life, your children's children's life. But the devil is a liar. He is a defeated foe. Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph and win the real war. The real war is raging in your mind. You got to put on this helmet of salvation and don't accept anything that is not from this word. When you sitting down watching film, you got to check out your enemy. And he's strategizing. He's a master strategist. He think he is in the earth. But God strategizes way better than Satan does. God already fixed. He, he counters and, and, and super counters. Everything Satan does, God already has something to counter what he's already tried to do. Watch this. And the day when the sons came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, from whence cometh thou? And Satan answered, Lord, and said, going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down. And the Lord said unto Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job? If there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and is true of evil. And still he holdeth fast his integrity. Still holding fast his integrity. 
Satan hit him, but he's still, he's still holding fast his integrity. Although thou moveth me against him to destroy him without cause, Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin, all right? Skin for skin. Now let's get let's get down to the nitty-gritty now. Let, let, let's really get down to now, now it, it's skin for skin. Yea, all that a man has will he give for his life. Why does Satan say that? He, he, he'll give everything. Say, he said, skin for skin. Yeah, all that a man has, will he give for his life. Watch this. Flip it. Let me go back to the guard. I'm watching film. I go back to that first clip. Go back to that first clip. When Satan told Adam and Eve, you're not going to die. Watch this. Y'all see what they got to do with this. Spirit a chance entered the world in the garden. Folk gambling today called the spirit a chance. Folk taking chances today. If it won't kill me, I might go ahead and try. You're not gonna die if you eat. If they, all I gotta do is lie to you and tell you what he said. You can go ahead and eat it. You might not. If I think, I think of the things I didn't try to do, jump from a building to another building. One for somebody to stop me off in a bath, fall down three stories, jump from building to a building. Because, man, you got it, gas, you got hops, you can jump. Man, people can tell us things, and we'll take these chances, y'all. As long as you think it won't kill you, try this, hit this, hit that, try this. I'm telling you, bro, it's, it's good. It's that real, man. It's that one hitter. Can't walk, can't see. Next thing you know, you're walking down the street with a coat on in the summertime. Because you done took something. And, and, and it's not funny. Sound funny. But it's a thin line between sane and insane. Satan ain't coming to play no games with these kids. He ain't coming to play no games with nobody. He's telling you one hit away. If I can trick him, I think this is good for him and not bad for him, he might do it. Say skin for skin. He said, all that a man has will, will he give for his life. Put forth thy hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee in thy face. He's not getting the seed. You're not getting them off. You watch the film already. You see that he didn't get me with the okie doke. He ain't finna get me in my mouth. He ain't finna lie to me. He ain't finna get me to deny the will of God because I'm studying my word. You're studying your word. You're going to win the will of word. I'm almost done. Praise God. I'm going to finish this on Tuesday. But I, I, I'm just saying, when Satan say now skin for skin, he said, touch his life. A man to give up everything if he think he's going to die. A man around from hospital to hospital. Get treatment to treatment when he think he's going to die. Ask me how I know. With all the faith in the world. Got a, had a collaboration of doctors. Doctors from here, doctors from there, doctors from everywhere. With my faith. Cancer. 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 Can't. Oh, Dad. Until I came to the realization it's either God's body or they. Six surgeries late. Cuts all over my body. It's either God's body or it's not. I'm telling you, somebody, you out there, you dealing with some things. It's either God's mind or it's your mind. Don't lose your mind, man, for nobody or no person. This is God's mind, and you ain't living in it for free. This God's mind, and you're not going to take nothing from me because God has my mind. I have the mind of Christ. We better start standing up and winning this real war out here. If we can't get all these little, we, we, laying on hands, really? I ain't fought that yet. I haven't defeated that consistently. Job had defeated any lies that was told, the things that happened in his life. Watch this. Let me, let me stay in the book. But put forth thy hand now and touch his bone and flesh and curse him to his face. And, and, and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. So he went forth in the presence of the Lord and spoke. See, God let him go and he said, Don't touch his life. Now, watch this. God know he can't touch his life, but God still let him go and touch his body. So Satan will take every opportunity afforded to him to either deceive you or to destroy you. He's been given permission from Elohim, the creator of the universe, to touch your body. But I've also been given permission 
not have been given permission to kill him. So I can't die until my time comes. You can't leave here until your time comes. Somebody rushing to the finish line just because you got an evil report. You didn't took a run into the deadline because you got an evil report. God, you so good. So he went from Satan in the presence of the Lord and he smoked Job with bulls and swords from the sole of his foot to the crown. And he took him and, and, and postured and, and to scrape himself. He scraped himself with all and he sat down among the ashes and, 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 and said his wife unto him, do thou still remain, retain thou integrity? Are you still gonna keep trusting this God? He letting all this stuff happen to you? Somebody say, yeah, I'm gonna maintain my integrity. Won't you cuss God and die? But he said unto her, thou speakest as one of the foolish women speakers. What? Shall we receive good in the hand of God? Watch this. Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this, did not Job sin with his lips? What was Job saying? He said, I'm going to praise God when he blessed me. I ain't going to praise him when something bad goes wrong. Am I just going to trust God when things are going good? That's what he said, didn't he? He said, well, what shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall not receive evil. The Bible said God created all things were created by him and for him. God said he created both evil and both good. And he used all things were created by him and for him. When we start to think about the sovereignty of God and God does what he wants to do because he does it according to the counsel of his own will, we start, stop, stop, stop asking so many questions. Now, watch this. When Job three friends, watch your friends, y'all. Watch your friends. You hear me? Go to verse number 11. Man, watch your friends. Man, when I, Job three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, that he came everyone from his own place. He came from Gary. He came from South Bend. And he came from, 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 um, from Portage. Them his friends, y'all. He, he, he they came to check him out. Hey, boy, this joker didn't did something bad this time. What gas do this time? Be careful, man, because some people can come, come and seemingly to encourage you, but end up discouraging you. They can, they can come as, as, as encouragers, but end up being discouragers. Which one are you? Are you a discourager or are you an encourager? Now, I'm going to jump over the scriptures a little bit, and I'm going to miss them names, for they had made an appointment together. Watch. They made a commitment and made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. Don't you come over my crib crying. I'm coming through the door with a box of Kleenex. My Where you at? Where you at? All right, now, you come in there with the word of God. You come in there with your Bibles wide open. You come say, Brother Gad, you're going to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Brother Gad, you're going to win this war. You're going to win this war against whatever you're going through. Sister V, you're going to win it. Brother Shay, you got this. Be careful with your friends. Amen? Somebody said, we're still in the film room. Still in the film room. So he a deceiver. If he can't get you with deception, he'll destroy you. If he can't destroy you, because what does he do? What does he do? What 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 what's his weapon? What do he, what did he use on Job? He, he used suffering. That was his weapon. CJ, he used suffering. Ebony, he used he used suffering, right? And what is he trying to what what's his goal? Football, I'm trying to get him to turn inside because I come from outside. I set the edge. I'm trying to get him to come inside so the linebacker can come and clean him up. What's his target? I'm trying to get you to be impatient with the will of God. He said, if you can just speed the process up, if you speed the process up, you're going to mess it up. Talking about winning the real war. You know how much stuff you didn't lost because you went one day too quick? You might have missed stuff you didn't forfeit in your life because you waited two days. Amen. Come on, Holy Spirit. Use that suffering, man. Weapon is that suffering. Try to get us to be impatient with the will of God. 
But you know what we need to stand on? And how do we fight them? We fight them with the grace of God. It's through grace we're saved. Don't go acting like I deserve it. I don't deserve it. Mercy gonna hold back what I do deserve it. Grace gonna give me what I don't. No, I don't. The Bible says, so the sinner shall surely die. But guess what? Though I sin, we will wash our sins whiter than snow. Man, sometimes I don't think we realize how forgiving we should be. We thank you, Holy. We don't realize how forgiving we should be. If God had not forgiven you for all of them, we're hell bound. Every last one of thought that you had that was not in alignment with his word that would have sent you to hell. Every uttered word or every thought would have said, see, we ain't been telling everybody that. We're playing with this thing. We've been smooth, telling smooth things and, and saying a little bit and it might hurt and it, it ain't gonna hurt that bad. No, it's gonna kill us and sends us to hell. But God forgave us for all. He said he, the, he died once, the just for the unjust, that he may bring us to God, being brought to death in the flesh and quickened by the spirit. He suffered once himself, the just God, holy for us who unholy, that he can bring us to God, that he may usher us back in the presence of God because God didn't want to have nothing to do with us. Being brought to death in his flesh, he died because I sinned, but he rose again for our justification, just as if I had never sinned. So if I have the standing of just I've never sinned, then I can stand before him complete in Christ. Man, that is gospel. That's good news. But if there's no bad news, there's no good news. So quit trying to tell everybody about the good news and tell them about the bad news. Then these kids will start saying, daddy telling me not to do it because he blew it. Mama telling me not to do it because she messed up real bad. He went to jail. He got hooked on drugs. We don't tell the truth, y'all. Sugarcoat it. That's why I ain't doing this because I, 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 I cheated. Cheated and let him in. I, I let him in. I let her in. I, I let them in. Praise God. I cheated. And now I'm broken. I gave him my money. Now I'm broke. Let's tell the truth, y'all. It's the grace of God, y'all. He wants us to be impatient. So he deceives us. He can't deceive us. He destroys us. Amen. I think I'm going to stop. Because I just I didn't even get to Zachariah. Man. I just want to set it up. When, 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 when you look at this, this setting, the next setting of this accuser, it's not on the football field. It's not in regular life. It was a vision of Zachariah. And the vision was set up like a courtroom in heaven. It was set up like a courtroom in heaven. Satan is continually going back and forth and telling God what he caught you doing. Stupid God already know. <laughs> really? You told God on me? God already know. So the setting is such that God, God is the judge in this setting. It's a courtroom in heaven. And Joshua, the high priest, he's the defendant. Extract Joshua and put yourself there. Okay, put yourself there. You, you're the defendant. And, and, and Satan is the prosecutor. That's the setting right there. And Zachariah, that, that's the setting. Praise God. He, he's trying to prove that Joshua is guilty. And I give you this and I ain't giving you no more to two. And he had a good case against him because his clothes were dirty. Y'all read Zechariah chapter 3. 
verse 1 through 10. It's only 10 verses. And we'll talk about it on Tuesday. He had a strong case against him because his clothes was filthy. And he was a priest. Praise God. His clothes was filthy because he, he stood in place of, uh, uh, of, of, of the people. And his clothes that was raggedy and filthy, they represented the sin that we read about. Zechariah, Malachi, Israel. Men were divorcing their wives and marrying heathen women. Tax collectors was taxing on toward the tax. They was taxing taxes. So he represented them with dirty clothes. But uh, I'm going to stop and let you know that the Lord stepped in as your defense attorney. And you're going to be all right. Father, we come in Jesus' name. We just thank you, Lord God. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. For you are so great, God. And we just thank you, Father God. I'm sorry, Lord God, for not quote or, or using even more scriptures today, God. I thank you, Lord God. And I'll, I'll hear you again later today, God. And Lord, you, you critique the message and you tell me, God, where I missed and where I hit. But I just thank you, Lord God, that not because of applause, Lord God, but because that is our Satan word, God. He is a manipulator, God. And he does de deceive us, God. And he, he does try to destroy us, but he cannot. And he does accuse us night and day, Lord God. So God, we just thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, that your word penetrates in our hearts and bring forth truth and fruit. It's in the matchless name of Yeshua HaMashiach. We pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a praise, everybody. Amen.